and not just have to, but like we get to, and we don't, we have a privilege as Christians to not be wandering hopeless going, why is this happening to me? We get to have a rootedness of going, well, your word says that all things are working together for our good and for the glory of God. And so it might not feel good right now, but somehow this is good. And to, and I know some people will hear us say that and think that we're just like slapping a band-aid on it. But like, I say that from like the depths of woundedness. Like, that's not a flippant like, well, this is good and God is good and it'll all be fine. Like, I have no idea if it'll all be fine. But I know that the Lord is who He says that He is. And and I cannot deny, and I've tried, y'all. Like, I've basically flipped Him the bird at times and then had to repent for it. Um, of just being like, no, like, if this is good, I like, I don't understand. And I've had to realize, like, my definition of good, what I picture as a good plan, doesn't even scratch the surface of what God's definition of good is. Like, God defines good. God defines love. God defines mercy. God defines justice. God defines forgiveness. Like, He is the definition of those things. And so if He says, I'm working all of these things for your good, then that means that what is happening right now is good and it's for our good because he says so. Because he says that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So even though my mind can't fathom how right now is good, my heart can still submit to the Lord and go, but you say that it is. So help my unbelief because nine times out of 10, I don't believe that this is good. Nine times out of 10, I'm going, I'm pretty sure I could piece together a better plan than right now that involves less pain, less heartache, less tears, less collapsing on the floor, like less unanswered questions. Like my plan could create that and and could do that. But Proverbs 16, it says humans in their heart make their plans, but the Lord establishes your steps. And so as we are in the thick of how do we, how do we receive this news, still fully believing that God is capable of, of healing Andrew's body and giving us a miracle child. Like we, we really do pray for that and believe that. And they don't have to fight against each other. Like you don't have to only be able to pray for a miracle and think that that's faith or just go, well, this is God's this is the lot I've been given, this is God's will, and think that that's faith. Like, walking by faith means daily going, Lord, I have no idea what you have in store for me, but I trust who you are in the midst of it, and that is that is walking by faith. I grew up thinking, like, walking by faith is only praying for the miracle. And it's like, but what if the miracle in this season is that we're still waking up and having joy and having conversations with other people to point back to God. Like, what if that's the miracle he has for us in this season? And if we're only consumed over here with, no, the miracle has to be the baby. It has to be the baby. It has to be a child. It has to be a child. Then we miss out on these other miracles. Like, it's a miracle for me to sit here and be able to honestly say that, like, I still love the Lord and I still fully believe that He is good and that He is working all of this for a greater picture that we don't see. Like, it's a miracle to be able to say that in all honesty, right? But then, or we could go over here and be like, well, this is just what it is. And we'll just go on and kind of become bitter and resentful of like, this is just the lot in life. It's like, no, that's also a really like, sad and kind of miserable place to be when you're just dragging your feet of like, well, this is just what his plan was. It's like, no, there is joy to be had. Like our prayer has been restored to us the joy of our salvation. May our joy not come from if I get pregnant this month or not. May our joy not come from, um, you know, Andrew being fully healed, like tie our joy solely to what you have done for us. Like if our hope is placed in the miracle that we desperately want, then we're gonna be hopeless because we can't tie our hope to something that could be gone tomorrow. Like our hope has to be anchored in something that is immovable, which is the love and the grace 
and the sustainability of God within our hearts and our minds. And so that's where we are as far as moving forward. Um, you know, we feel really convicted that the Lord's just called us to wait. We don't want to make any decisions of um, whether it be adoption or other alternative options. Um, we don't want to make that in the midst of anxiousness and sadness and grief and just a lot of emotions. We want to walk in wisdom and um, you know whatever way the Lord calls us to start a family if He does. Um, we want to do that with eyes that are clearly set on the cross and not set on what our hearts are just desiring right now. Um, you know, in Psalm 37, it says, um, oh, what is it? It's the Lord will give you, oh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And a lot of people have sent me that in the context of like, God's going to give you a baby because it's a desire of your heart. And I think that's a really dangerous way of viewing God and viewing that scripture, let alone scripture um, in its entirety, because it turns God into a genie. And, and even as Christians, and I've fallen into this too, like I've been like, well, if, if I have this and it's a good and godly desire, right? Like to have a baby or to get married or to whatever, fill in the blank, like, well, it's a good and godly desire. So that means that you're going to give it to me. And it's like, no, the first part of the verse is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so when I read that now through the eyes of what we're going through, I read it as delight yourself in God, period. That's the starting place. And in the midst of that, he will instruct my heart for what it needs to desire. So has my desire for a baby just gone away in the midst of all of this or in the midst of what it looks like we're walking towards? No, but as I've delighted myself in him, my desire for him has been grown more than my desire for a baby. And that is, I think, the purpose of, of any of our trials and any of our things that we're going through. It's to stir us back to adoration of Him. It's to cause us to lean on Him. It's to cause us to look at the things that we want and that we're putting our identity in, finding our purpose in, all of these things, and to go, that won't sustain me though. And I need to turn my eyes back on the only one who can give me the satisfaction that I'm craving from a baby. Like, even if, and we, Andrew and I have talked about this, like, even if we had a child tomorrow, there is a, there is a part of my heart that truly believes that I will be satisfied and fulfilled by that child. And that's just not true, right? There was a part of my heart that thought I would be fully satisfied and fulfilled by my husband. And when I got married, oh, all would be well because now I'm married. And it's all of those little aches and holes in my heart. They're going to be fulfilled now. And it's like, no, that's not the case. I've had to come face to face with like, oh, there's still parts of my heart that are yearning for more because I those parts of my heart were designed to be fulfilled solely by God. And so as we're walking through all of this, our prayer is keep our eyes on you, Lord. Keep our eyes and our hearts centered on the fact that no matter what happens tomorrow, whether we receive the miracle or we're stuck in this waiting period for a lot longer than we would prefer to be, if we are rooted and centered and delighting ourselves in you, then we can have contentment and joy. Like it's not out of reach for us. Like being able to laugh and have fun and and be hopeful and and enjoy experiences and different things is not out of reach just because we don't have what we desire right now. It is right there for us because of what Christ has done and what Christ has extended to us in our salvation. And that has to be enough. And on the days when it doesn't feel like that's enough, my prayer is show me why I don't believe that that is enough. Show me why I believe that a child is what's going to fulfill this like longing. And what, what am I missing about you, God, and the character of you and who you are that has made me believe that I need something else to experience joy or happiness or contentment. Um, and that's what we're praying for. We're, we're just praying that he, he would sustain us, that he would strengthen us. Um, and that doesn't mean the grief or the sadness or the pain goes away. Like I spent the last three days crying myself to sleep. And sometimes that happens and then sometimes I'm okay. And, 
And it's not a matter of fighting those off or thinking, oh, I must not be moving on or having faith in you or any of that because I'm still having those. It's like, no, I'm human. And, um, and this is a weighty thing. And this is painful. And none of this, none of what I've said, none of you know, me saying like God is so good in the midst of it, none of that like just gets rid of the pain. It just, it has a reason. Like I have a reason for the pain and it's not that I'm just wandering on my own. It's this is producing something and I just don't fully see it yet. But there are bits and pieces and glimpses where I'm like, oh, if we had a child right now, I don't know if I could have gotten there. Like, I don't know if this could have been revealed to me if we were where I wanted us to be right now. Like that fruit that's being, that we're bearing right now is coming about because of where we are and being childless right now. And do I still pray that I wake up next month and, and I get a positive pregnancy test? Absolutely. Do I pray though that ultimately he will sustain me if it's another negative? Yes. And that I would ultimately, no matter what, like Hannah did in 1 Samuel, like when she did receive her promise, but, and she did receive a child, but her, reflect, her reaction was to just give glory back to God and was to look back to God and say, you have given me this. It wasn't to then just become obsessed with the gift. Her eyes were focused on the one who gives the, these gifts, who the, the miracle maker, not just the miracle in and of itself. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to have our eyes on him um, and not on what we want and what we think is a good timeline, what we think is a good way of going about it. Um, but just going, Lord, where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? How do you want us to process and communicate and, and just be in the midst of this really painful and difficult season? Um, so I hope that just gives more insight into where we are and into how we're thinking through this. Um, you know, I know it might, it might just seem cookie cutter to some. It might seem um, faithless to others. Like, I don't know. It's just where the Lord has us and, and it's good and it's painful and it's ugly at times, um, but it's really refining and really beautiful. And like, there are just depths of God's presence and my dependence on Him that I would have never known apart from this. And for that alone, I am grateful for this season. Um, and I have no idea what our lives are gonna look like in a month or six months or six years. I have no idea, but I can truly say that there is a gratefulness for where we are right now that, um, that we have, and that is a miracle and a testimony that only God is able to give. Like only God is capable of giving us just a true rootedness and joy and understanding that like it's gonna be okay like it it really is it really is going to be okay um so i hope that this just kind of i hope you hear i hope you're our hearts I, i'm speaking on behalf of andrew and i um we would appreciate your prayers like we are praying for a miracle we're praying for um, his body to be healed. Um, and we're also just praying that the Lord would help our unbelief that this is producing good um, and it is producing something. And yeah, we please don't only pray that we have a baby, like pray that the Lord would just reveal himself to us in the midst of this, like pray that he would be glorified in the midst of our longing and our losses right now. Um, Yes, we want the baby, but we also want like fruitfulness to just be birthed within both of us and within our lives and our stories. Um, and that's ultimately what we care about is that the Lord would be so glorified even in the midst of our heartache and our pain. And um, yeah, that, that's our ultimate hope uh, that people would take away from what we're walking through right now. Um, so... That's all I really have for you guys today. Um, I really appreciate just your patience and y'all walking alongside us and just being kind and gracious and just faithful friends and, um, and brothers and sisters in Christ to be there for us and with us in the midst of all of this. I would also appreciate prayers of 
how we move forward when it comes to sharing with you guys and how much to share and um, and what that would look like because we're just in a season of of figuring out how to steward our story well but also how to rest and be honoring to like where our hearts are in the midst of it so overall we just need prayer we need love we need support we need stories and experiences and just different things that you guys have been through that that means a lot the stories you've already sent us and shared have been really comforting some of crazy absolute miracles some of being in the exact same place and not ever experiencing the miracle that they had hoped for but experiencing miracles in other ways um, all of those are helpful and i think it's all beautiful in building up the kingdom and building up all of our hearts and minds to adoration of the fact that like nothing is impossible with God and his plans and his ways truly are better like they really are and whatever we think is like the most perfect and ideal thing that we can map out for ourselves it doesn't compare to what the Lord does and like to the path and the picture that he pieces together. There's no comparison. And I've already seen that in other areas of my life. And I'm like, man, why would I doubt that this would be any different? Like the situation you're in, the situation we're in is no different. It's not out of reach for what the Lord is doing and how he is weaving all of it together so that we can look and go, oh, I get it. I get it and I see it and that might not come into eternity and that's okay with us um, but we are just here to just try and share where we are and um, and hopefully stir you guys to faith and adoration of the Lord and who he is in the midst of all of that and um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video for walking alongside us and I am just excited to continue this journey with you all